Episode 9 Epi, epi, episode 9 What we're looking at is people who are rebelling against the ultimate standard But this is the result of it We're getting worse music, worse visual arts, worse stories The people who want to make good stories They have to sacrifice on some of the god-hating things that they want to do In order to make their stories more Yo, realistic me out Yeah, I say made in his image But somehow we could take what he make as what he make And make a bit different They only listen, let the creator be Praise every instance that we assume a creative existence. All you hearing me? Let me bless the studio. Uh, Fix up the microphone. Check one, two, three, go. Sure. This is Udo Ibelame, your host, and welcome to the show. Preach, Jesus. Romans chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. For this reason it is by faith, in order that it may be in accordance with grace, so that the promise will be guaranteed to all the descendants, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, a father of many nations have I made you. In the presence of him whom he believed, even God, who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. That's Romans chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. Today, I want to talk to you about God being our creator. And us, as those who engage in media, being his children. All right? As children imitate their parents, I am going to speak of some ways in which, some very important ways, by the way, in which um, we should be able to imitate God. Of course, there are ways in which we cannot be like him, and there are other ways in which we can. All right? So um, that scripture that I just read, Romans 4, I'll focus on verse 17. The very, very last part of it says... That God is the one who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. Now, um, a lot has been done to this verse to twist it and uh, drag it, kicking and screaming out of context. Um, But while we are not going to dwell too much on that, this is speaking about Abraham, right? If you read the whole context of Romans 4 and even the book of Romans, this is making an argument that um, one can be right with God by faith and that all who are right with God by faith are the true sons of Abraham. Um, And it's not um, purely biological. You can be a biological son of Abraham and not really be his son because you don't have the faith that Abraham had. Abraham is our father in the faith, not our father in the flesh, right? So this speaks about Abraham who, even though he could not have children, but he was promised descendants, right? He believed God who gives life to the dead and who calls into being that which does not exist. So first of all, it's God that calls into being that which does not exist, Second of all, if you want to put yourself in there and say that you can call into being that which does not exist, you must also say that you can give life to the dead. You, you can do that if you're going to put yourself there, right? Um, But um, as I said, the important thing here is that God is the one who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. So... God, he is able to create ex nihilo out of nothing. And he calls things into being that weren't there from before. Um, The book of Hebrews in chapter 11 says that by faith we understand that God created the world by the power of his words. So that what we see came from things that can't be seen, which namely would be his word, right? The worlds were framed by the word of God. That's what it says, 
All right? Now, we don't have that type of creative power. We cannot make things out of nothing. We cannot speak and see it come to pass. No matter what you've been told. That's divine power. That's the power of God. That's the creative power of God. Right? But um, we call ourselves creatives, some, some of us. Some of us call ourselves creatives. What are we talking about? What we are saying is that um, we are coming up with new concepts. But when we are coming up with new concepts, we are not um, pulling it out of nothing. Not even our ideas are ex nihilo, out of nothing. We have um, a way of thinking. We have a personality. We have experiences. All of those things are shaped by stuff that is already there. And then when we actually get to the, to the work of writing, sculpting, painting, dancing, singing, whatever we're doing, we are taking parts of God's world taking them apart and putting them together in creative ways, right? That's what we're doing. We are amalgamating, you know? We're not creating out of nothing like God does. So that is one way in which we are not like God, right? But um, all of what we use to be quote-unquote creative is God's raw material, right? Um, the sounds that we hear every day over years and years we've been able to discover resonant frequencies or notes that sound good to us and that work within a particular system and like these are all things that exist in the world around us that we have put in a different way it didn't come out of a vacuum it didn't come out of nothing right god is the only one that can create out of nothing right but the raw material comes from him and it is all good. Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 says, God saw all that he had made and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Right? That's the last verse of, of the first chapter of Genesis. So this is what we have happening. We have God he creates everything. He creates the heavens and the earth and fills them up and he does all that he does within those six days. That is his raw material that we then go, how much ever, a thousand years later, and we take some of that stuff and we make it into something else. We take some sounds, some resonant frequencies, some some timbres from different instruments or from even different things and we make them into a song, right? We take some clay and we make it into a sculpture. We take these pigments and we make them a along with um, something that we use as a canvas and we make them into a painting, right? But the raw materials comes from God. These things can and must be used to glorify God right but our raw material is good even the art forms these are all good things because it again mirrors the way in which god created as much as it can as much as a creature can because again a creature cannot create out of nothing right only god can do that but what we creatures can do is take what god has made and put them together in different ways. We can envision something, plan it out, and do it, and see it come to pass. We can have thoughts and all of those things, and use the the language and the the literary knowledge that we have to come up with a song, a poem, a blog, a book. We can we can do these things. You understand? And that would be our way of being creative, as much as a creature can be creative, right? But all of these things are good, right? Now, there is a sense in which 
some folks tend to be a bit uptight about certain art forms or certain forms of media and uh, demonize the actual form of media. Um, so some people might be like, okay, when this type of music came out, you'll say, okay, this type of music is bad. And then hundreds of years later, people have this type of music scored out in hymnals that they use every Sunday. And now we're saying, okay, this type of music is bad. That type of music is bad. Next, all of these types of music are bad. Whenever something is contemporary to us from an era perspective and also from a, a culture perspective, we tend to demonize it. And again, this comes from a lack of understanding of what we would have been speaking about before when I was discussing the Christian vision prescription. Sin is the problem, not things. But we look at the things around us, the things that are closest to us, and uh, we put the blame on those things. And so we keep ourselves away from those things. I submit to you that even some persons who might feel comfortable in themselves, keeping themselves away from certain things, have not dealt with this sin in their hearts. Right? We still have to deal with that. We still have that to deal with. You understand? But God's things are good. God's things are good. Um, I may have spoken about alcohol before. And this is a non-media example. Right? The Bible speaks all over um, in glowing terms about alcohol. I come from a, a, a culture, a Christian culture, that sees drinking as a sin outright, right? The problem with such a position is that it's not biblical, all right? So we have um, these few examples that I've used before. Um, Psalm 104, verse 14 and 15, He, that is our God, Yahweh, causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the labor of man, so that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine, which makes man's heart glad, so that he may make his face glisten with oil and food, which sustains man's heart. So, this is the way in which God takes care of us and blesses us. He gives us wine and wine gladdens men's hearts so when you drink wine you're drinking something that god has made when you drink beer you only consume alcohol you're consuming something that god has made that god has even made a part of our sacraments if that's the word you want to use like the lord's table it's wine that was used right I come from a church and I attend a church that uses juice. But really and truly, we know that it's wine that we know is wine that's used, right? And wine is a good thing. Wine makes man's heart glad. And God causes the, the earth to bring forth grapes so that we can have wine that makes man's heart glad. All of this is in his head. This is scripture. So... Your disagreement at this point, if you have that disagreement, wouldn't be with me, right? Proverbs chapter 3 verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord that is Yahweh from your wealth and from the first of all your produce, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Honor the Lord in this way, in this very tangible way, and the Lord will bless you. How will the Lord bless you? He will fill your barns with plenty food and he will give you a lot of new wine. God blesses people with wine. So wine is a good thing that God blesses people with. All right? Song of Songs. People say Song of Solomon, but I don't like that because um, the book itself says the Song of Songs that are of Solomon. One thing the book says is that at the beginning is that, okay, Solomon has other songs, but this is the best one. This is the song of songs, all right? 
So I don't too like Song of Solomon as a book title. I prefer Song of Songs, right? So Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 2. May he kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. So the assumptions here in this very saucy poetry that um, Solomon is engaging in here. This woman, this female character here, she is in love with a male character and she wants to kiss him on the lips. She wants to kiss him in the mouth and she says that his kisses and his love is better than wine. So the assumption here is that wine is good, right? The assumption is that wine is good. So, we have these things. We can't really argue with them. God speaks about wine as though it's a blessing. But then we also have this. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drink a brawler, and whoever is intoxicated by it is not wise. So, what's the problem? Intoxication. You understand? Wine will mock and brawl with whoever is intoxicated by it, right? So the problem is not consumption. The problem is intoxication. The fruit of the Spirit, according to Galatians 5, verse 23, the very, very last one is temperance, self-control, all right? So as Christians, we are to be in our right minds. Right? That's the that's the fruit of the spirit is to be in your right mind, is to have control of yourself and not let any substance have control of you. You understand? Um that would come against intoxication and addiction. Right? So those are the problems. Not wine, but intoxication and the an addiction. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 18 through 21. And do not get drunk with wine for that is dissipation but be filled with the spirit speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God even the Father and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. So don't be drunk with wine because that's excess, that's too much, that's not where we want to be, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Maybe I've said this before, but um, being filled with the Holy Spirit is not like being drunk. We need to get that straight. Being filled with the Spirit is not like being drunk because we see here from verse 19 and continuing that we are being told to do certain things right you have to be in your right mind to be following these instructions we're being told to do certain things all right so we are to be filled with the holy spirit and uh, we are to obey the things that come afterwards that demonstrate that we are filled with the holy spirit doing these things demonstrate that we are filled with the holy spirit and being subject to one another in the fear of christ the following verses going even into um, chapter 6 will tell us who has to be subject to who and the other person on the other side of the relationship how they are to relate to those that are to be subject to them what is the point of all this the point of all this is that alcohol like many things in God's world is good but that it can be abused also like many things in God's world all right I mean I'm sure a certain argument can be made for certain things that are in themselves a misuse or an abuse of something good that God made. So, for instance, there are pornographic art forms, right, where we glorify lust. That would be an art form that we can objectively see, and it's not because it makes us uncomfortable. It's not because we haven't killed the sin in our hearts, and so we're trying to come down on everyone's fun. But because this is objectively wrong, based on 
what were we saying in one of our earlier episodes? If it is that we can't find something in the Bible, what does God say about it? What does the Bible say about it? We look at the undergrading principles. What is under pornography? What props it up? Lust props it up. Adultery and fornication props it up. To a certain extent, uh, man stealing props it up. And these things are all against God's law. You understand what I'm saying? Some of them, according to God's law, are even capital crimes. Right? This is objectively speaking. We look at God's law and we see, okay, the things that prop up pornography are not good. They're not good, objectively speaking. Um, That's not what we're doing when someone is saying, oh, Calypso is bad or, oh, Facebook is bad or something like that. That's not what they're doing, right? Um, Now, this is not to say that you can't choose not to engage in something, right? But um, what you can't do is make that rule for everyone else, Romans 14, right? The weaker brother is not allowed to judge his other brothers um, and his word is not to become the law for his stronger brothers in the faith to follow right we don't want to be under the tyranny of the weaker brother so yes the raw material that god has given us is good and the different things that we can do with it putting it together in different artistic ways of course sifted through the law of god is not like um we're doing pornography As I said, those things are good. All of those things are good, right? Now, um, here's the other thing. It's not just that the raw material is good. God made it that way. So as we seek to create, we should create in the same way that God creates, which is to do a good job. We should make good stuff. You understand? Let's go back to Genesis. All right? Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to just be going rapid fire through um, a number of verses here. Verse 4. God saw that the light was good. Verse 10. God called the dry land earth and the gathering of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Verse 12, the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds after their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in them after their kind, and God saw that it was good. Verses 16 through 18, God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He made the stars also. God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to govern the day and the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Verse 21. God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarmed after their kind and every winged bird after its kind. And God saw that it was good. Verse 25, God made the beasts of the earth after their kind and the cattle after their kind and everything that creeps on the ground after its kind and God saw that it was good. Verse 31, God saw all that he had made and behold, it was very good. So, God made sure that what he was making was good. He made sure he, see, he sought it that what he was making was good. Now, there are a lot of people, myself included, I want to say a lot of people because somebody else, somebody will come in and say, not me. I don't know, right? But I assume that this is a universal truth. A lot of people are connected to the things they do, especially if you're doing something creative. You you write or you um, you sing, you make music, you you paint, you you do these things, you engage in some sort of media or art or some sort of thing like that, and uh, you are very, very connected to it. All right? Here's what you need to do. Make sure that what you are doing is good. 
I can't speak to the standards on every single piece of media, every single art form, every whatever, because I am not a jack of all trades. There are some things, a few amount of things that I'm really good at, all right? But I'm not a jack of all trades. But God made sure that what he was doing was good. God has a standard for what that is, all right? Psalm 1, 136. Give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Go through that. Psalm you keep hearing for his loving kindness is everlasting. But all over the Bible in different places you will hear this very um formulation. Give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his loving kindness is everlasting, or maybe your version might say for his mercies endure forever. Right? Same difference. The important thing is that the Lord is good. He is good. That's what he is. You understand? And he sets up what that is. He says what it is. He decides what is good. He sees to it that things are good and he makes those ultimate determinations. He was looking through all of creation and he saw things were good. The problem in creation and where the fall comes, this is where the fall comes. And this is from a moral standpoint as well as since we're dealing with art, a quality standpoint, an aesthetic standpoint. Okay? What does the serpent say to the woman? Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. The serpent said to the woman, You surely will not die, for God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. All right? So you will be like God and you will know good and evil. You will determine what that is for yourself. That's basically um, what is being said there. You will determine what is good and what is evil for yourself. Do we have that prerogative? No, we do not. The moral standpoint is objective and it's set when God gives law. The aesthetic standpoint and the quality standpoint is objective and it's set in creation. I want you to think about what a good artist is. Like, let's just use, um, for instance, visual arts, the visual arts, right? What is a good visual artist? What's a good uh, cartoonist, a good painter? A good painter is someone who can make things look exactly how God put them. How realistic to what we see in our day-to-day can you make this painting of what you're painting look? If you're painting me, how much like me can you make the painting look? If you're painting a landscape, how much like how the landscape actually looks can you make the painting look? If you're painting fictional characters... How real can you make those fictional characters look? That's the mark of a good, like an objectively good painting. Right now, I'm sure you guys can see, what we're looking at is people who are rebelling against the ultimate standard. And the quality of what they're doing is not the primary or the only way in which they're doing this, but this is the result of it the result of it is we're getting worse music we're getting worse visual arts we're getting worse stories the people who want to make good stories they have to sacrifice on some of the god-hating things that they want to do in order to make their stories more realistic what is good good is what god has done how realistic And when you say realistic, we have to understand that God made the world, right? So how much like our experience can we make our art? How real can it be? Even if I write a song um, and I write a song about something, it connects with you because it's real to you. You understand? It pulls you to something real. It draws you into something real. Because the real world around us is the actual standard. That's the standard. That's the aesthetic standard. God did a good job. 
this thing literally says that God did a good job. That's the standard. All right? And if we go the way of saying that um, we don't need God, we don't need a standard, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, other similar nonsenses. You get modern art. If I say modern art piece, all sorts of nonsense is going to come into your head because you know exactly what I'm talking about, I'm sure. God made what he did good and we are to make things good. We are to strive to be excellent at our craft, right? In the Bible, I don't think that God or that kings have ever said, let me get a harpist. How good you want the harpist to be? Hmm. It doesn't matter. If he thinks he's good, then he's good. No, they will usually say, get me someone who can play the harp. Someone who can play. That implies an objective standard. Get me a skilled harpist. Someone who's skilled. That implies an objective standard. Right? So there are objective standards for this. Can you write? Can you paint? Can you sculpt? Can you act? Can you sing? Can you sing? One like me, out of love for music, for God in heaven, and for you, I will let you know if you can't sing. I will let you know, I will put you onto people, whatever the case is, but I will let you know if you're not there. There are standards for these things, and we shouldn't scoff at these standards. God set the standard in creation. All right? We have also been able to amalgamate things in particular ways and develop rules for things and to a certain extent certain things can be broken but a good artist is a good artist someone who does good media does good media even a good journalist is a good journalist you understand we are to be good at what we do and on the journalism side remember the standard is God. And when we're talking about the reporting of events, the standard is what God in his providence has determined to happen. Not your version of events, not what you get through your rose-colored glasses or your light blue-colored glasses. You understand? Not um, through your through your rising sunglasses or your 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 balise glasses it is what has really happened and is not what is the most sensational thing it's not what whatever it is what god has determined would happen that is the standard of journalism the standard of media is what god has done what god has done is the standard and we are to hold to that and we are to hold each other to that. If we want what we're doing around us to be respected, if we want the quality of it to improve, we need to have little tolerance for less than the standard to an extent that we can help someone else up to where we are, to an extent that we ourselves will not be content with where we are, and to an extent that if someone needs something from us, we can feel justified, justified in charging a premium for it because we know that what we do is good, objectively speaking. What we do is good. What we do should be good. All right? So no beauty is, is in the eyes of the beholder, None of that nonsense. No, well, you know, that is for them and this is for... Now, there's a difference, again, between... Let me just be clear before I leave here that there's a difference between what is preferential and uh, what is quality. You understand? So if something is not my preference, that doesn't mean that it's bad. It's just not for me, right? However... There is a difference between something that is not my preference and something that is bad. 
and something can be bad, it's possible. Okay? Let's not close out that possibility in our heads. Something can be bad. What we have to be able to do is be honest with ourselves, be honest with those around us, and that will help us. That will really, really help us to make sure that everything moves forward in our sphere of influence, in our industry, so to speak, everything will move forward. If we hold ourselves and those around us to a standard. All right. So before I ramble any further, I'll end here. Shorter episode. Maybe the rest of these episodes will be equally short. We'll see. All right. But, um, just to recap, how can we be like our creator? We can be good. Just be good at what we're doing. And appreciate God's good world. All right? Appreciate what God has done. And be good at what we do. And be careful not to abuse anything in God's world or to do stuff contrary to his law. Because what is wrong with the world is not things. It's sin. The only answer for that is Jesus Christ. If you're listening to this and you don't know Jesus and don't think you need to, I will tell you that you need to. And I will ask you, what do you do with your guilt? This good God that you know is good because you see the world around you, you know that he is good. And such a good and righteous and holy God cannot tolerate anything less. The only way out is Jesus. Jesus is good. And Jesus has fulfilled the righteousness of God perfectly. And he died for the sins of those who would believe in him. So if you turn from your sin today, you trust in Jesus Christ, you can rest assured that you will be saved. All right? I hope this episode was beneficial to you. See you guys in two weeks. Praise Jesus. You made it through the whole episode, the show done Hope you get some positive in the nucleus You know, a proton Anyhow, you know the slogan Preach Jesus, Jesus.